Hello friends, it's Allison. I hope you're having a super happy day so far. So today's video is pretty special for me because we will be unboxing this bad boy. So a couple weeks ago, or I guess it's been almost a month now, I reached, I should say we reached 100,000 subscribers on this YouTube channel, which is so stinking incredible to me and I am still blown away and pinching myself but I wanted to unbox this with you all just because you have been such a huge part of my story and you're the reason why we're in this position unboxing this package from YouTube in the first place so I really just want to tell you how thankful I am and how much your support means to me and everyone who has subscribed, watched my videos, or just sent any kind of word of encouragement throughout the years has truly made such a positive impact on my life and I really, 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 really hope that I can always be a positive impact on your life as well. So we're doing this. I, I can't believe it. When I was kind of getting close to reaching 100,000 subscribers and I was really looking for motivation and inspiration, I would look up these videos of unboxing the plaque just because it's really, I think it's really important to visualize your goals and kind of see you in that position as well because that'll give you a lot more motivation to reach them and chase them. So it's just crazy to be the person filming one now. So, so surreal. But let's just jump into it and see what we have inside. So if you're super confused, YouTube sends you a plaque whenever you reach a certain number of subscribers so they have one for a hundred thousand and then i think they have one for a million and then they have one for 10 million i think i am not incredibly sure but i am pretty sure those are like the different ranks um and the different milestones where you get a plaque that's just a little background if you're super confused right now Ooh, that didn't make a good noise Okay, this is what we have so far. So exciting. <laughs> Got a little piece of foam. Okay, and now we have, I'm getting emotional. I didn't think I would get emotional because like once I reach 100,000 subscribers, it's not like it's super fulfilling or anything. I mean, it's just a number. What, what you do and the purpose behind it is what makes it fulfilling. Um, so even though you might say, oh, like I can't wait. And yeah, I was excited for sure, but it wasn't like, my life was perfect or I'm just happy forever now. It's That's not how life works. Um, but I have to make it emotional just because it still feels surreal. I'm looking at it. I can't believe it. Okay, so here's this letter. It says, it's this is what it looks like. I'm trying to show you, but I'm kidding. I'm just getting frazzled. Um, it says, you've just done something that very few YouTube creators accomplish. You had an astonishing 100,000 people subscribe to your channel. We know that numbers on YouTube can get really big, but we hope that you don't lose sight of the reality behind the six digit milestone. Each and every person who has subscribed to your channel has been touched by what you created. They were inspired, challenged, or entertained. This is embarrassing. <laughs> You achieved this milestone with hard work, perseverance, and probably a healthy sense of humor too. What you've accomplished can't be taken away from you, and we'd like to recognize you in all your hard work with this Silver Creator Award, a small token of our esteem and respect. We know that you don't do this for rewards, you do it because you have a drive to create and share, and because you've found an audience who cares. This letter is so beautifully written. Wow, I might just frame the letter, like forget about the plaque. <laughs> Believe us when we say that we can't wait to see what you do next. A million subscribers may seem a long way off right now, but you're closer than you think and we're rooting for you. Congratulations, yours sincerely, Susan Wojcik. I don't know how to say her last name, <laughs> but she's the CEO of YouTube. Oh, stinking cool. <laughs> That's so sweet. That's really, really great. And I love the part about that you don't do this for, for rewards, but because you have a drive to create and share. 
and that you found an audience who cares because that's so true like yes i probably would be doing this if i had 100 subscribers but it is really really special to have real people who care about my life and care about what i share so i'm just super thankful okay here it is when i was filling out the reward um you're able to put your name and my channel name is actually Allison. It's not Allison Biggerstaff, it's just Allison. But I decided to put Allison Biggerstaff just because. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. <laughs> I have to figure out where I want to put it, but it has little holes in the back so you can hang it up. But I'll probably just set it on my desk or something like that. But I seriously do want to frame this letter. It is so inspiring to me and so well written and so sincere. So. I love that. Oh, I love how the the inside is a mirror. So it's you guys. You're in the mirror because you are the ones who made it happen as well. Wow. Okay, well, that was fun. Really special. A good moment. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, so I did want to make this video a little more than just me unboxing this plaque, even though that was a beautiful moment. So last night I put a little question feature on my Instagram story just asking if you had any YouTube related questions because I really do want to be a resource and help you all in any way possible and just like have some transparency. So I received a few questions. Okay, so let's get into it. First question is from Shelby and she says, is it weird having people you know watch your channel? Um. No, I would say no. It's actually super flattering like when my friend because lots of my friends They don't watch all my videos because we're just like living life together um, But it's really sweet when they when they mention something that they saw in the video because I'm always taken back and I'm like what you watch my videos That's so sweet and a lot of my family watches my videos like my Grammy and grandma and mom and dad So I'm really thankful for that and of course Brandon but people like co-workers and stuff I don't think it's weird at all, but I think other people think it's weird So like they think it's weird and they always be and they're always like oh This is probably really weird, but like I watched your video and I'm like why is that weird? I mean, I'm putting it out like it's what I do for a living. So I don't know why it's weird, but personally, I don't think it's weird. I just said weird a million times. I need a drink. Okay. What do you use to edit your thumbnails? So I use Photoshop. Um, well, I edit the photo. So I usually take a photo and then I edit it in Photoshop. So I use a bunch of different fonts and stuff, but if you don't have Photoshop, Canva is a great resource it, great resource for design um, and it's free, so that's amazing. But I use Photoshop. Sometimes they take me forever too. I was working on one this morning actually before this and I just couldn't get it right and I'm still not super happy with it, but at some point you just have to be like, Okay, we're not going to spend any more time on this. We're going to get to the juicy stuff straight away because I feel like everybody wants to know how, how much money YouTubers make. And although I do not feel comfortable sharing like my salary or how much I make per year, I'm definitely okay with like giving a little insight. So basically, I have a few different revenue streams just for my business. So I have YouTube and within YouTube, you can make money from ads. So that's a big one. Well, actually it's not that big though. Like you have to, in order to make a living off of ad revenue alone, you have to have like million, a millions and millions of views. So you don't get a ton of money from that. I would say like each video would probably get a hundred to $200 at the most, unless it gets like a million views of, of money. So from ad revenue. So, you know, that's great. That's awesome. And that's a really positive thing to get income from the ads, but you can't really live off of $200. Oh, this is a month by the way, or, but after a month that you post a video, it doesn't really get that much ad revenue as time goes on, unless it like gets a ton of views randomly. So it really depends on the views and it doesn't have to do with your number of subscribers really. So that's a little interesting factoid, but then 
the big place where you can get a lot more revenue is with sponsorships so i'm sure most of you are pretty familiar with that but that's just when a brand reaches out to you and wants you to promote their product in one of your videos and that's really where you can make a more hearty income if you begin those spark partnerships and begin to create relationships with brands and that's what i really try to focus on i really love to work with top brand brands that i love and that's a really important thing for me when I'm considering partnerships and I love to work with brands multiple times so you guys have probably noticed that before but it's really about building a relationship with the company and always being professional so I could talk a lot more about that but I want to be able to answer more questions so there's lots of questions of how you just grow your channel and how you get more subscribers and how you get more views and this is tough because there's so many factors and of course I don't have all the answers like lots of it is still a mystery to me so I would say you really have to be consistent which I know is a big one and everyone's tired of hearing that but I think it's true like the more you put out the more chances of being seen you have so one of my favorite quotes I heard Casey Neistat Casey Neistat I cannot pronounce anybody's name today but I heard him say one time keep creating keep doing the work and that is one of my favorite things to say because I try to remind myself of that like sometimes it gets draining you know sometimes it's really hard to stay up late and continue editing a video but you really just have to keep going and keep creating the work and eventually you will see the fruits of your hard work so really just staying consistent and motivated and as hard as it is I do try not to focus on the numbers I think it's great to celebrate milestones but I don't think it's good to dwell on oh my goodness I've only gotten 10 subscribers this month or something like that because that energy that you're spending negatively towards the numbers is energy wasted that you could have been using making a new video or thinking of new ideas so really just focusing your energy in a positive way is how I've been able to focus on the positive which helps me not stump my creativity hopefully that makes sense but one thing that I've really that has worked for me personally when I was in college um, that's when I started my YouTube channel is when I was a freshman in college I've had my account since 2012 because if you want to comment on a video like you have to have a YouTube account but I just started making consistent videos my freshman year of college which was in 2016 so that's when I really started cranking and college videos are definitely popular and maybe that's how a lot of you found me so I feel like that really helped me with my growth and then once I graduated college I was kind of worried that no one would watch my videos anymore because that was kind of my niche was college at the time um and so I was nervous about that, but then I just kept doing vlogs and stuff. And now one thing that has really helped me grow are my routine videos. So my morning routines, my night routines, those are my highest performing videos. So that's great because I love, I love making them and I really feel like they can be inspiring too. So that's kind of what's helped me grow. Um, is because those are so popular and that's why a lot of people have subscribed I believe as well so you really have to pay attention to what works well and what's um, perceived well by your audience but I also think it's important to make sure you continue to do what what makes you happy so if if everybody watches your mukbang videos of you eating but you don't really want to do those anymore like that's not a good enough reason to keep doing them just because everybody likes them. You have to do what you enjoy also because it'll be so obvious to your audience that you're not having fun. Oh, I like this one. Favorite and least favorite thing about being a YouTuber. Oh, wow. Favorite. Okay, my favorite is probably the flex flexible. <laughs> flexible lifestyle because I really do enjoy working from home and being able to travel and have Fridays off when Brandon has Fridays off because his job like he gets every other Friday off so awesome so I really love the flexibility um, because that's the kind of lifestyle I won't I've I've always wanted to create for myself when I was out of school so that's my number one especially when I have kids and stuff like I hope to continue to do this um, but I definitely want to have the flexibility for my family and then 
Least favorite is probably, hmm, of course there are like a lot of downsides, but I'm trying to think of the, I think it's just sometimes um, the pressure I put on myself, which isn't necessarily YouTube's fault, but sometimes I'll create these false expectations for myself like, oh, and I'll be super critical of myself and like, oh, this video isn't good enough or um, I should have done this instead of that, which I've definitely been better at, but I do have a little bit of perfectionist in me, so, I can be very judgmental. Of course, other people can be judgmental, but I feel like since it is such a personal job, you're kind of like your your worst critic too. So that's kind of been hard for me to navigate, but that would be my least favorite. How has YouTube affected your marriage? Ooh. So, and some people ask, how does Brandon, my husband, feel about YouTube? Because you can probably tell like he's not super like oh hey guys what's up i'm brandon like he is not like that with the camera he has a very interesting relationship with um just being in front of the camera he's not like me where i'm just like hey what's up he's like hey okay. um but he is so supportive and i'm so super thankful for that he truly is my number one fan and is so proud of me and so encouraging to me so that really means so much to me like i i could get you choked up just thinking about it like I really think it is so important to have a partner who is encouraging and supportive of your dreams and goals and doesn't want to hold you back but wants to pat you on the back and be the person to raise you up when you're feeling upset and he's done that for me so many times so I'm really thankful in my PMS I mean like I can't stop crying today but um but yeah, so he's so supportive, but he's definitely become more comfortable with the camera and everything like that. But he's never, like, we're never gonna have our own vlog. I mean, I guess never say never. But I don't ever see us like having our own couple's vlog channel or him having his own channel or anything like that. But he's really supportive. How did you get over vlog anxiety? I always feel so weird vlogging in public. Yes, I feel that. That is a mood. I feel super weird too. Well, it really depends on the location. Like if I'm at Disney, I don't really care. Like there's tons of people taking pictures and it's pretty popular at Disney. I feel like you will always get stares, but at this point I've kind of toned it out. That's something that Brandon is not good at. My husband, he, he like doesn't like when people start staring at us, if we're taking pictures or if I'm vlogging, he gets kind of like, are looking at us like I don't he does not like to have attention or be the center of attention at all so he that's the biggest thing for him um but I'm I'm pretty good about like who cares like we're we're doing it you know it's fine I, I don't really care too much but if I'm at like Publix or grocery store or something like that I never vlog I never pull out the camera I am too embarrassed if I'm with someone else it makes it so much better but like even at Target, unless I'm with someone else, I do not pull out my camera alone, I'm too scared. So I usually just vlog in the car or at home and then I'll just film some B-roll while I'm in public. So like don't make yourself do something that you're super uncomfortable with because that's just torture. Someone asked, do you think it is possible to monetize your channel with college vlogs slash simple videos? Absolutely. I think you have to reach a certain amount of subscribers before you can monetize. I'm not entirely sure or at least a number, um, a certain amount of time of views, but it's absolutely possible and you really can make money. Like it should never be about the money. It should be about the purpose and just your desire to create. But you, I, I do want to share, like, of course you can make money off YouTube and so many people are doing it these days and you really don't need a million subscribers or a million views. Like I've been saying, you really can do this on a smaller level as well, especially if you're able to, you know, harness those positive relationships with brands. So I'm reading this book by Gary Vee. It's called Crushing It. One of the first little pages has a really inspiring quote. Here it is, I, I have to frame this as well. I'll frame this next to my YouTube letter. But it says, this is dedicated to all the people who are visionary enough to recognize the enormous opportunities we've been given in this new digital age and who are brave enough to demand and seek out happiness, not only in their life, but also in their work. So no, this isn't necessarily talking about money, but I've been saying this for years and I always wanna be a testimony to this you can do whatever you 
you crave and desire and make a living out of it. I mean, you really have to strategize and work hard, so, so hard. And it's not gonna happen overnight. You have to be patient. But you, you can do that, especially in this digital age that we're living in. I mean, hundreds, thousands of people are making a living off of social media. So if that's something you wanna pursue, like keep trying, keep doing it, keep creating, keep doing the work. Someone asked, are you going to continue YouTube when you have a baby? Yes, that's the plan. Who knows? Um, I probably will continue doing YouTube. I hope so because like I said, it's so fun. And I one big thing that I love about YouTube is just how I'm documenting my life. And for instance, I watch our honeymoon vlog so many times. I was just watching it yesterday. It really is a diary in a sense. So looking back is so special. And when you have a baby, like of course you wanna document everything. It's your precious child. So I definitely plan on doing that. And Brandon's like totally cool with that as well. So when we have a family, like he'll probably be in the vlogs a little more as well. That's kind of like what I imagine for the future. So we'll see what happens, who knows, but I would love to kind of continue as I have a family, but of course my family will be my number one priority. So someone asked, how much money have you invested on equipment? So I'll just do a little rundown of what equipment I use. So I have my Canon G7X camera, which I'm actually using for this video. It's my vlog camera, but I've been loving it for sit down videos lately because I feel like the coloring is really nice and it feels more, because when you have like the big tripod with the big DSLR camera, it feels a little bit more nerve wracking and like sometimes I feel more uncomfortable, but when I'm with my vlog camel, camel, hey vlog camel, <laughs> when I'm with my vlog camera, I just feel more at ease and relaxed. So I've been loving this, um, but I really love that camera and that's what I use for all my vlogs and I have it on this little tripod that I got from Amazon. I'll do a link of everything down below. Um, and then my DSLR, I have a Canon 80D. And for my videos, especially my routine videos, where they're more of like those beautiful crisp shots, I have a Sigma 35 art lens. So that's kind of my setup. And I have an Amazon tripod and then I have a Manfrotto tripod. So that's what I use. And then I also have a ring light, which I don't use much. And I have a studio light, which I haven't used my lighting in so long. I love natural light because I feel like it's the most flattering and light gives me energy. So I love to be around the sunshine and open windows. So that's what I do. It's really not that fancy of a setup. Um, I didn't start out with this. You, you can start out with an iPhone, absolutely. That's totally fine, like start with what you have. If you're if you're making the excuse like, no, I don't wanna start because I don't have the right equipment. Like that is a poor excuse. Like, no, you, you can start now. And so many people make that excuse and then never begin. And it's all about beginning and stop making excuses because your dreams are waiting you and the best thing to do is just get started. So don't make those excuses. <laughs> okay, let's find one more question and then we're gonna wrap up. How do you get the courage and confidence to start a YouTube channel and put your content out there? Ah, oh, such a good question. Um, honestly, when I started my freshman year of college, I, I was embarrassed. Like I was worried what people would think. So, I didn't, I don't even know if I told anybody. I think I told Brandon um, and he was always supportive, but I don't think I told anybody else. People just started finding it. Like on Instagram, I was already doing a lot of like Instagram stuff and collaborations and I never shared my channel on Instagram. Probably the first year I was doing it because I was embarrassed and worried of what people would think and you know, that's sad, it does make me sad, but if that, if not sharing it is what you need to do to start, that's fine. Like it can be a very personal thing with yourself and then of course people will start finding out about it at some point, but at least you can kind of have a few months to ease into it and just like get a feel for everything and kind of build that confidence and experience and then share it with the world. Now I feel more comfortable sharing, but I don't even share every video I make like on Instagram and stuff just because 
I, I still do get insecure about what people will think, which I'm not proud of, but I'm working on that. And you can have grace with yourself and, and just know that you'll grow over time as a person and with your confidence, it'll just grow. So I think that's the biggest thing. And you probably will get immature hate comments at some point, but hopefully the positivity will outweigh the negativity and you really just have to focus your energy on that. So I hope this was helpful. I hope this was fun. Thank you guys so much again for subscribing and watching this video and supporting my channel. It truly does mean the world to me and I hope you know that and I hope you realize that and if YouTube or social media or really anything you have a dream on your heart, I really really hope you go for it and I hope this inspires you to do that and please let me know if you have any questions or if there's anything that I can do to help you. So. Thanks again, guys, and I will see you soon.